Hello and welcome back to the Rocket League Batman tutorial series. This is episode 7, Dynamic Goals and Spawns. So, I'm going to be explaining how to do dynamic goals with trigger volumes and dynamic spawns with triggers and path nodes and not a dynamic player start because I think it's easier to work with path nodes, at least for me. And it's quicker. At least for me. So, I've already deleted all of the spawns. I'm just going to make another player start. I'm going to put it over here. Usually you would put this under the map. Okay, and then um, let's grab a plane. Import a plane. Alright, plane's been imported. Let me just add collision to that. Okay. And we need to move this underneath the player start. Like so, and you don't need to add a, you don't really need to add a plane, but it helps with um, building the spawns. And uh, I always like to have a plane because then I can locate where the spawns are quickly. And so let's just apply collision. I've already talked about how to do this, so I'm not going to talk about what I'm Changing, and then I'm also going to hide it in game. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to move the pylon into the center of this plane. This is why it's useful to have the plane. Because you can just move it to the center, like that. Okay. And so, here's our blue spawn, and then our orange spawn is going to be on this side of the pylon, which is going to be this side of the plane. This way it's easy to have a plane, easier to see things. Uh, I am just going to attach this player spawn just like that. Okay, done. And let's make that destination only team in next one. I've already talked about all this. Okay, now let's say I want the spawn to be right here. Let's. I just want this. Usually, the only reason you would use a dynamic spawn is for something like. Spider Ball, where you need something like Spider Ball, where you want to have blue spawns in a way that you can't do a normal mirrored spawn over. That doesn't make a lot of sense, but for Spider Ball, here, let me just open Spider Ball. All right, here we go. We're now in Spider Ball. So, as you can see, when you look at the top of Spider Ball, there's a blue and blue. And if you can't have a blue spawn here, it won't mirror correctly, especially because Spider Ball is a little bit off-centered. So it's not going to mirror correctly how you want it. So you need to do dynamic spawns, which is down here. Dynamic spawns also happen when if you want to make multi-staged levels, kind of like a mini golf or the alphabet, where it goes from one field to the other. You need spawns like this. And this is also where you get that rubber banding at the beginning of the game. That's what this is from. So let me just open back the tutorial. Here, we're back in the tutorial map. I'm just going to make it spawn over here since I don't really have a use for dynamic spawns on this map specifically, but I still want to show how to do it. So here we go, just like that. And then we'll rotate it. I don't know, that seems fine. And then let me just add four spawns. I'm going to change the axis world. I'm going to center that a little better. Close enough. I'm not going to be exact right now. And then let's say I want a blue spawn. Let's say I want the blue spawns facing toward each other. Like that. Alright, so... Bang. So blue is going to spawn right here. And orange is going to spawn right here. Facing toward each other. And you could do this actually by changing the mirror field type and world properties. If you go to view world properties, if you go down to, you go down to my map info and then you can actually change this. Uh, and then you could uh, make these spawns work a lot easier. But for this example, I don't really have, you know, much of a map anyway. So I'm just gonna do it this way. Okay, so 
First thing we need to do is you make a, need to make a trigger under this over this spawn. So let me just make grab my brush. I did that by clicking on click on the spawn. Hit B shows it, and then if you hit this, it'll reset it to where the origin of whatever you have selected, and then make it bigger, and that's good. Trigger. Okay. And then hide the brush, duplicate it, and this is why it's useful to have the plane. You can see about where they're going to spawn. And there we go. So now it's time for a little bit of kismet. This is probably the easiest kismet you'll ever have to do. New event, trigger volume three, touch, and we are using the blue spawns. So I'm gonna select my blue spawns. Actually, I'm gonna use these two spawns as blue. Let me let me color them. There we go. All right, we got blue and red. So I'll select my blue spawns. I'll right click, do object variables, and it's gonna create two path nodes gonna maximize kismet and we're gonna do basic kismet so first one i'm gonna do is set this up for the vehicle it can fire an infinite amount of times and then i always deselect player only and always select client side that's just a thing i always do for multiplayer purposes because even if this is set to vehicle you want let's say you wanted it to not activate for the ball it still wouldn't activate because it's set to vehicle so I always just deselect that and use the class proximity type. Anyway, we're going to right click, new action, switch, random. And then you can also do that by clicking this light bulb and typing in random. Create, there we go, it's right there. So the random node will create a random output whenever it's fired. So in, so we want it to randomize every time it's touched. And I have two spawns, so I'm gonna set the link count to two. And the link count is however many things you have. So if I had 10 different spawns, I'd set the link number to 10. Okay, so I'm gonna set that to two. And then I want to loop and auto disable links. This way it'll cycle through all of the spawns before they're used again. So we're gonna do action, actor, and teleport. And then we're gonna right click the object variable on the instigator and then set that as the target. And then as the destination, we're gonna set that as a first path node. And then we're gonna attach that teleport to link one. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the second one. Okay. Yeah, just like that, we have two spawns working for blue now. And then we just do the same thing for orange, we just do it the other way, so vehicle underscore TA zero zero missed a checkbox. There we go. Uh, if you want to know how I did that, I just hit the arrow keys and hit enter. You can see the checkbox will uncheck and check every time I hit enter. Okay, and then I'm going to create a, actually, I can just copy paste this random node and then hold down alt and left click, and you can just you can get rid of those links once it's touched. Grab my two path nodes, that. No object variables, action, actor, teleport, link one, instigator, no object variable, target, copy paste it. And then move that up there, move that down there, link them. And there we go, we're done. Now we have two dynamic spawns, just like that. Now, for a dynamic goal, it's pretty much the same process, except with the ball now. It's a little different though. So I'm gonna reset my brush back to the middle. Now I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna move it over here, just so I can keep everything above the level. Usually I put all of this stuff below the level or way out of the way. You saw in Spider Ball that it was below the map. It just leaves it out of the way in case, because if a car were to touch it again, it would do the same exact thing. So that's why it's good to have it under the map so no one could touch it again. And then we're gonna make this a uh, goal volume right here. Yeah, it's probably too big for a goal volume, that's fine. And then we're gonna add an actor and a path node. Move it into the center-ish of the goal volume. This is really big for a goal volume, but that's fine. And then I want it to award the points to team number one. No goal indicator. 
And there we go, that's it. So, for this, the goal indicator doesn't matter because the ball is going to teleport inside of this goal volume. It's not gonna, um, it's not gonna play a goal explosion. So if we check no goal indicator, we don't have to worry about goal orientation, the direction, or typing in the archetype. So now that we got that set up, we're gonna make it so whenever it touches this trigger, it'll tell it'll score. So let's see. Let me just see if I use this for anything. No. Nope. Okay, so right here you can see that I didn't use it for anything. If I did use the trigger volume for something, you would see right click find trigger volume one Unreal Kismet and it teleports or moves your view to where you used the trigger, which for this one we did use it here. But this one it doesn't have that option, so I didn't use it. So if we go right here, new touch trigger. And then we're gonna change this to Ball underscore TA zero zero player only client side. This one you do want to make sure you uncheck client player only because it's not a player, it's the ball, it's an object. And then we're going to right click create new object variable. And then we're going to right click new action actor teleport. And then when it's touched, teleport this target to this path node. And we're going to right click new object variable using path node seven. And if you right click on it, you can just hit that and it'll link it automatically. And then there you go, that's a dynamic goal done. And if I wanted, I could have this moving side to side. All I would have to do for that is... Okay, if I wanted this to move side to side, I need to convert this to a dynamic trigger volume so it can move. And then assign dynamic trigger volume zero to events. And then delete the old one. Because if you convert it and it's used in Kismet, it's going to make a new object. And then now we can move it. And then we're going to change the physics to interpolating. So that way we can use it with matinee. So I'm just going to make it so it moves side to side. It's not going to be very exciting. Okay, so what I've done is I've made a trigger volume that goes over, or I've made a cube that goes over the trigger volume because you can't see trigger volumes in game. Even if I were to go into hidden and uncheck hidden game, it's not going to work. It's going to, it's still going to be hidden in Rocket League. So I made a cube, so I'll just put that over the trigger volume so we know where it is. So let's just do new event, level loaded. We'll set that to client side only. If you don't set it to client side only, it will only happen to the host when they first join. And I mean, for an animation like this, if you wanted it to, if you want it to link with gameplay, you can make a countdown start, set that to play, client side, then all players, and that one to make it so it syncs with everyone once the countdown starts. But I'm gonna make sure I have this selected first. I need to convert this to a mover, and now it's an interp actor. Just basic matinee stuff, and I have not gone over matinee, and I am not going to go over matinee. Um, if you want to, if you want to know how matinee works, there are too many tutorials on YouTube that can show you matinee and how everything works. And there's so much to it. Even I don't know what all of it does. I just know how to use it for Rocket League. So that's what I do. So I'm gonna make. I'm just gonna name this. I'm just going to name this trigger and cube. Okay. And now I am going to make it five seconds, or why not? And I'm going to move the first keyframe so it starts on the left. Halfway in. Make a new keyframe. Okay. And then we're going to make it go to the right. And then five seconds. Wait, no, I don't need to do that. I can just.
There you go. So it goes to the right, goes to the left, goes back to the right. Very boring, but you know, it's there. And then if I wanted, I could set the trigger volume to be with the matinee, but that might cause issues. And I, the reason I set this fizz interpolating is so it could work with matinee, but now that I'm thinking about it, I'm just not going to do it that way. I'm going to do new action actor teleport. And then once the countdown starts, we're going to set the target as the trigger and set the destination as the cube. And then after 0.01 seconds, it's going to redo it. So it's just going to teleport with it infinitely. Is basically what's going to happen. And then we have a dynamic trigger for the ball and we have dynamic spawns for the cars. So I'm going to rebuild, save, and we'll be in Rocket League. Just All right, before I save, since I decided to do this with teleporting, I'm just setting the fizz back to none. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I'm setting that back in case you have issues. Um, yeah, I'm just going to set that back because I haven't actually animated a trigger before, but that's how you would do it. I just like doing the teleport. It's a lot simpler to understand and matinee causes a lot of issues with syncing stuff sometimes. So it's just easier to do it that way. All right, so we're loaded in. If I join blue, you'll see that we spawn at one of the path nodes. If I change teams, blue again, you can see we spawn at the other. Orange and orange. And you see it uses all the spawns before. And then we have the dynamic goal. And you might be wondering why it's going uh, through the wall. And that's because the matinee plays from wherever the starting position is. So since we set it to go left and right, it does that from the starting position. So the starting position in matinee was here. But since in the world it was here, it's going to play the same animation, but from here. And you can see that one we touch it, nothing happens. All right, so I may have made a rookie mistake. I uh, accidentally made this a teleport instead of a set actor location. Now that I have a set actor location with the target being the instigator and the location being the path node, it'll work now. Um, yeah, it's a rookie mistake. But uh, it happens. Here we go. And you can see that we haven't rubber banded at all. And that's because um, it only really happens for clients and not the host. And there we go, you can see it scores instantly. Just like that. And you can see with no goal indicator, it um, with no in goal indicator, it plays a an animation. Or the, it plays the goal explosion with no goal indicator. It just has no sense of direction, so it just plays it from wherever it spawned. So just like that, and we have a dynamic, we have a dynamic goal now. So you can see that if, uh, so it's the, what's happening is the trigger is teleporting it to, to it every 0.01 seconds. So if the trigger leaves and we put it to where it was, it's not going to work because it's attached to that cube. Well, that's going to be it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about how to control players as objects.